Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Last video on predicates tonight. By the way, awesome shirt. Yeah, I completed it. What's up? What's up? I got really fat doing it too. Mmm, fat and strong. What are we talking about? Predicates. Take the pure functions that we've created, put them inside of a function to create stuff, give you a taste of boxes, and give you a taste of why you want to start using list comprehensions for these kind of things. Let's dive in. Now that we have a couple of predicates to verify that this function can be pure, we can start using them. The challenge is, is that if these predicates fail, specifically around the legit ability score and legit string for the name, if either of these fail, what in the heck do we return to keep this function pure? Most of these predicate functions ensure very, very simple laws of the universe. Is it a string or not? These are questions that can be answered with a yes or no. For example, legit string, is it a string or not? Yes or no. Legit number, is a data number? No. Is one a number? Yes. Is the number positive? Yes. These kind of predicates are very, very easy to say true or false. But as you build higher level predicates, there's little ambiguities that tend to seep in. So you try to assert those away. In this case, legit ability score. You know the rules and you can ensure it is pure and there is no ambiguity. But if there is a failure or a false, it's nice to give a reason why. So we're not going to delve into the validators or checkers. In a future video, we'll explain how that gives you more insight into why the function didn't return the value you wanted. So we're gonna take these predicates, we're gonna put them in get person to validate his inputs so we always get the same output instead of strange things that could lead to errors or state mutation and we don't know what's going on. However, if we do that, what do we return if these don't validate, right? So it's very similar to the IO problem. If you can't control what a function returns, then you always return a maybe. So a maybe is just another word for a box. In this case, we're going to turn a box or an object, and it's going to say if it worked or not. If it worked, cool, you get your data. If it didn't work, we will explain the reasons why. Let's take our legit string function and validate the name. And if it doesn't work, we'll return an object that basically says it didn't work and why. And we will copy pasta for the remaining three. And we'll take our legit ability score. We'll apply it for strength, dexterity, and constitution, and fix the error for these guys. Fix the names. If it did work, it passed all our predicates and all our tests to make sure that our inputs are legit. We'll now return an object. We'll do this on multiple lines to make it more readable. We'll say result is true in your data that you want to get from it. It looks like this. We'll tab it to make it a little bit more readable. So all we've done is wrapped it in an object or another box. In this case, give it a result of true. So if you know the contract is, if you know the result is true, then your data is waiting for you. If the result is false, instead you have an error waiting for you as to why you didn't get your data. And it's normally because of an invalid input. But either way, th this helps ensure that your inputs are valid and this helps ensure your outputs are always valid by returning a box or maybe. It is a function. We always return a value. Just like these predicates, we always know that there's a value. Same input always equals the same output. Even if you can't control the state, we don't mutate state and we don't have any side effects. So none of these functions outside are affected by this function, nor is anything internally changed to affect something outside. These are all by val. And while you could affect this data's reference, we don't care because every time this function is called, we return a new one. So given this is our last set of predicates, let's explain what problems we actually solved by doing this set of predicates and creating these pure functions. So the first is return a value. All our functions we know return a value. All our predicates return true or false every single time. We, they never return, or th in this case, throw errors. It's always a true or false, and it builds upon a native library, which is pretty battle-tested nowadays. Second is the same inputs always equal the same output. So if we always give a date, it's always going to give us false. If we always give it a normal string, it's always going to give us true. Now, for the same input and output, that also is affected down here as well we're always gonna get a box back. In this case, a uh, maybe, or also known as an object that lets you know if what you were trying to do worked or not. Mutable state, there's no mutable state anywhere. Notice there's no variables to be found whatsoever. It's nothing but functions that return values 
and we've composed functions inside of each other, in this case of our predicate as well as our main creation function. And the values they take in are all, in this case, by val, and the objects that it spit out are by ref, but it's brand new, and this function's over, and it doesn't have a re reference to it. So there's no state anywhere. And lastly, as, as far as I.O., if this function get person were reading from a text file or pulling from a server, you would do the exact same return operation. You return a maybe, either the server worked or it didn't. If it didn't, it would tell you why. If it did, it would tell you, cool, it did, and here's your data. Same thing with reading a text file. You always return a maybe because it's completely out of your control if it works.